Do you have that one store that you frequent and whenever they send a promotional email about new stock, you just, you just sometimes can't resist? Battery hookup is that for me. And so a few months ago, they sent an email and I was looking at this battery and I was like, how, how can I not? So anyway, with battery hookup, you typically get things that you either have to build or you need to modify in order for them to work for you. And today we're gonna look at my fire engine red battery and see what modifications I need to make. Right then, so fire engine red battery. This is a Dino Europe lithium iron phosphate, 120 amp hour. Looking at the one it kind of looks like is a valence battery. And the main thing that makes me think of that is these wires here. This states on it somewhere, where does it say? can only be used with corresponding BMS and separate shutoff relays. So that tells me that there is no relay, MOSFET, anything that's going to prevent power coming out of these. If we first, 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 let's see what kind of power we're getting. 13.28 volts. So it is live, which means theoretically you could use the battery like this, like a lot of people did back when BMSs were not nearly as popular and as affordable as they are now. But I paid $247 shipped for this thing. I'm sure it's a used battery, probably for like a medical device or something. But I do want to use it safely and the main thing have low temperature protection for the project that I'm probably going to be using it for. So let's tear into this and find out what's going up. It's got a little blinking green light. This says 2.2.2 .2 and I have no idea what that means, but it looks like it's covering something up. Let's see what this is. Hmm, I don't know. Let's look at this because <clears throat> there's an access panel. The first thing I thought though was this has five pins on it and it would be kind of silly in a way but I, I have to wonder if this is the sense leads because if this is the sense leads for the individual cells that would make adding a BMS quite easy. Well, let's measure between a couple of these and see. No, I'm not getting any voltage, so no good there. Let's go into this access panel here. Full speed. Kind of what we expected, some sort of a circuit board. Certainly don't see any MOSFETs on here. Lots of wires though, so let's pull this guy off because I'm sure we won't be needing him. Oh, there's another screw. Why didn't y'all tell me? There could be live voltages in here, but, you know, only up to 12 volts. So nothing that's going to shock me, but if I drop something in the wrong place, I could have some sparkage. Let's try and avoid the sparkage. Lots of wires here. Okay. So first of all, these two sets are communication, probably some sort of a bus from battery to battery. Don't care about those, those are gonna get ripped out. Let's see what else there is. We've got, I don't know why, but these kinda strike me as being temperature sensors. It's a lot of temperature sensors. Four of them, maybe one for each cell. Um, we've got this. I wonder if this is the little LED that's been flashing. I bet you that's what that is, a little red and black wire. And this one, I have no idea. Really have no idea. I wonder if any of these are labeled. It's labeled red, green. PO, positive and negative. This one is, so the communications ones are labeled uh, ground, ground, A, B, and VCC. 
So that would probably indicate some sort of an RS-485 or CAN bus type communication, which would be fairly common. Okay, so now we've got this one though. We've got V0 through V6. Now, okay, so it looks like this one can go up to 6S. So maybe for like a lithium titanate, you would be a 6S to get like a 12 volt type setup. Um, and of course only four or five wires. So that's probably our B minus for the white one all the way to B4 for the red one. These black wires are labeled RT. Who knows? But let's go ahead and rip that out. And I don't need that. So the only question is if I don't think, I'm not going to bother trying to reuse any of this stuff. Let's just go to town and rip this out. Where are my pliers at? I know I certainly don't need these communications wires. Let's see if this will just pull. Could always cut them, but you know. There we go. Oh. Yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll cut it cuz I don't think that's going to fit through. I already ripped the thing to shreds anyway. It's actually got like a shielding cable and everything. Got my snips. Um I don't suppose it matters where I cut that thing. Don't need that either. We'll go ahead and snip this one. After snipping those, I'll realize that there might have been some use for them and that I snipped them in the wrong place. Bending the plastic in here. Okay, there we go. Get rid of that. So now we've just got these. Definitely need these. Now, a BMS. We're going to need a BMS. So this is your standard JBD 4S lithium iron phosphate BMS. I use this in a lot of my own builds. It's got the Bluetooth dongle so I can see everything. It's rated for 120 amps and I don't know what the capacity is for this for being able to do draw but usually a 1C discharge rate is, is standard and so a 120 amp hour battery, 120 amp hour or 120 amp of BMS should be fine. I'm not going to worry about that but I've got these sense leads. Now what would be really slick is if this harness matched up and I could just plug it in. So we determined, dang it, it's opposite. Because my white wire on this side is my B minus. I suppose I could verify that. That's what I that's what it said on the board. Let's see if that's what it says with the multimeter. So I suspect if I can get access to it here. That this one, okay, let's do positive over here. So this should show a positive like 13.5, I think is what we saw earlier. 13.28, okay. So if this was going to work, I'd have to plug it in upside down into my BMS. If this works, the plug is much bigger. So from the get-go, see if this will come off, because, you know, who needs a safety clip? Um, oh, so close. I wonder if I pulled these... pull these little ridges off, maybe it would be just enough, maybe. While I'm not against rewiring things and splicing in stuff, just plugging the connector in is so much easier. Alright, so we are upside down. So I'm got red wire is B4, and that's what it shows in the VMS here, so. Let's do that. Oh, so close. Oh, but you know what? Those, no, it's not gonna work. I have to swap them. I suppose one option would be 
these pins are typically removable from the connector. I wonder if I could pop them out. Starting to mess with the sense leads here, right? If I pull out two of these sense leads, they can short with each other. They got no fuses or nothing. So I need to be super careful with this, which means I really should be grabbing myself some electrical tape right now. But what I'm gonna do, because I guess, oh gosh, you're proving hard to get here. Okay, there you go. So yes, I can pull them out. I don't want to plug this in backwards into the BMS, which means I'm gonna to have to pull all of these out and then put them back in before I can actually check to see if it fits into the BMS. I'll commit to that. Today I'll be using white tape, not black tape. Still electrical tape. Gordon needs that stretchy. All right, so I probably should be paying attention. You know what, I can just swap. Swap, 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 because the middle one will stay in the middle. So I'm gonna take out now the opposite end here. I was saying I needed to pay attention to which wire goes where so that after I pull them all out, I then know where to put them all back. But if I do them a pair at a time, I don't have to write something down. I'm, I don't like writing things down because I'm lazy and would have to go find a piece of paper and a pencil. Why would I have to find a piece of paper and a pencil when we're in the 21st century? Because my phone's being used to record me. Can't very well put it in my notes. <laughs> well, goodness, there you go. There you go. Okay, so which direction does this go? I think it goes like this. Ha, clicked right in. And let's put this one in. Then I just gotta swap the black and the yellow. It's interesting that they used white for negative when they had a black available. So silly. I say silly. They probably had a reason. Okay, that's in there. So now let's go for our yellow. Oh, came out easier than expected. And our black. Pop our black over here, and our yellow in. Now that I have completely mutilated this thing, but now, <clears throat> we have, I think it'll work. The spacing seems right. Aha, okay, so now, I don't think this BMS will boot until the B minus is connected. So with these BMSs, and really this is a lesson in BMSs in general, B minus, and you can see that it's labeled here on the circuit board, and C minus. This is what's called a common port BMS. So current in and out of the battery flows through this BMS. You've got MOSFETs in here, so you can see like uh, this row on the right and this row on the left. One of those is for inflow of current, one of those is for outflow of current. And so you can actually control only outflow or only inflow on the BMS. So if you're at full charge, but you've got an inverter connected, you can still pull power from the battery, but the BMS won't allow power in, and vice versa. If it's all the way discharged, it will allow power in, but not power out, which is pretty slick. There are also what they call separate port BMSs, where say you've got a C minus, but you also have a P minus. So your C minus would be for your charging and your P minus would be for your power or your loads. And those are not nearly as common. You'll see those a lot if you ever do like recycled batteries with scooters or something, they'll have a separate charge port. A lot of times that's a much slower current that can flow through that. 
I, I don't really know exactly why they do it as two separate things. And it does seem like most of the ones nowadays are common port, um, especially since a, a lot of the BMSs are being built now for uh, solar in mind, where you have an inverter charger and it's all one. You don't really have a P minus and a C minus needed. You just need the one. Anyway, so we need something here to connect to our battery minus. Battery minus, yeah. I could tear this whole thing apart. It's probably glued down and get access to the terminal up here um, before it reaches here. Or, or, just rip this tape off. I could just run this BMS with the B minus straight to that terminal. And then I'll basically create a new battery minus that's through the BMS. Now, this could be dangerous if, I mean, this is a recycled battery. I'm not going to be letting someone else use this. But if someone did try and connect to the original terminals, then that would be before the BMS, and you don't have any protection for charging or discharging. So just something to keep in mind. What would have been really slick is if my BMS was small enough to fit in the original cavity. Oh, I just had a thought. OK, but yeah. If it would fit into the original cavity, that would have been really cool because I could have just run my wires straight up here. No big deal. And connect it on. But you know what? That's fine. What we're going to do is we'll just mount the BMS some other place. I wish I had some like double stick tape or something. Um, and we will run our B minus right there. So I think what I'm going to need is a 5 16 lug for this and to crimp on. Because uh, that's an M8, which would be about 5 16 Hold on to that for me. All right. Because <clears throat> <clears throat> you know, I must clear my throat before I start talking. I have found that uh, four gauge terminals work well with these. These are, I think this is three 10 gauge wires, which would make sense for 120 amps because they rate them at, uh, they rate them at, you know, 40 amps a piece. I can math. So we're going to pop some insulation off of each of these. should fit inside of our four gauge. Oh yeah, nicely. And we'll just get that crimped. problem with this bolt is that it's a little bit long. So I need a few spacers. I wonder if I've got some spacers. Because, you know, I'm too lazy to get a new bolt. I said I was too lazy to get a new bolt, and I walked over, and I was like, well, is this a new bolt? This, this, this might work. That's like half as short. Let's see if it actually threads in, though. Oh, look at that. Come on. Oh, that's right, though. It needs less spacers. So that's good. We'll leave this one out here so that we can use it on the uh, on the other side. How much spacer did this need? There's a lock washer. Lock washers are good. Need another washer. There we go.
All right, so with that connected, I ought to be able to put this in the correct way and fire up the BMS. Then maybe we should go put some charge into this battery. We'll grab our tablet here, see if we can connect. Oh, there's the Mac right there. This one says 31C2. Um, 31C2, that's this one over here. Yeah, I might have a few batteries laying around. Um, so let's connect to this one and see what our cell voltages look like. Oh, 3.33 across the board. Pretty slick. Well, I don't know. Should we uh, connect a solar charge control to this? I'm going to need to lay a panel or two out in the yard and see what it does. Found one. I'm not shocking myself, I'm just scaring myself. We've got some nice panels here we can use. Back to the workstation. So we'll just plug these guys in here. It's charging. She works. This works, it's really not that difficult. Even if these balance leads, the connector didn't work, all we'd really need to do is find out which lead is what and match it up with the harness from our BMS. And we determined that the white one was our negative. So you would just splice your uh, negative from your BMS into the negative from the battery. No big deal. And in this case, they were labeled um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And it's the same thing on the BMS. So at that point, they're lined up, and you just do wire for wire, plug that into the BMS, and you're fine. I was just lucky in the fact that I was able to modify this and just plug it straight in. And it works. And that's a cheap battery. Now, the next thing I guess I would have to do would be some sort of a capacity to test to see how well these work. Battery hookup is always really good, though, about telling you how healthy the batteries are that they're selling you. So I don't remember what this one was, but, you know, if it's a 120 amp hour battery, they may have advertised it as a 100 amp hour battery, which a 100 amp hour battery, you typically are going to pay 300 bucks for a super cheap, it might work battery up to $850 for a Battleborn. So 250 bucks for this, and from AliExpress or battery hookup, they have these BMSs with the Bluetooth module. You know, another 75 bucks. You're talking about 300 and 325 dollars for a battery that is probably really good quality, because the type of stuff that battery hookup gets a hold of is usually the super high quality medical grade stuff that's just off lease, not being used anymore. They replace it to refresh it. Um, and, and so personally, spending 325 bucks, adding a BMS to it is worth it compared to spending 300 bucks on a battery that could have grade B cells in it, a BMS that can't actually do 100 amps, um, no Bluetooth monitoring, you know, all of those things. So to me, this makes sense even to the point, and this would be a more advanced topic, you have the sense leads here. If you had bought four of these, line them all up in a row, you've got the sense leads. You could then wire it all up in series and run one 48 volt BMS for the whole series. Have yourself a 48 volt, 120 amp hour pack for what was it, a grand for the batteries and then another 100 bucks for a BMS. So you could have yourself a 100 amp hour, 120 amp hour, it's used, so it might be a 100 amp hour, 48 volt for 1100 bucks, all in, with your own BMS that has Bluetooth. Um, so I mean, comparison to that, like I mean the rack mount batteries that, that Signature Solar and a lot of SOK and a lot of them are releasing, 
usually start at about 1500 bucks. Um, so nicer, nice package and everything, but certainly a way to go. And with the political climate the way it is, it's always good to know that you can kind of piece some things together. I've actually been worrying about that a little bit, just, just a little bit, because the way that Russia is acting, uh, China could go the same way with, say, Taiwan. And if we had sanctions with China, we're going we're gonna to really be hurting on a lot of our ability to get batteries. Um, most of our prismatic cells, if not all of them, come from China. And they're doing a lot of importing right now. I'm doing some importing of that. So if that all goes away, we're probably going to be turning to things like this, um, secondhand batteries. And the prices of these will go up because the value is there. And they're great batteries. So check out when I upload my use for this. I, I'm going to upload another video about that. So I'll throw it up here as a, as a car in-screen item. So check that out if you want to see what I end up using this for. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Grab a couple of these. Grab a couple of these. Oh, goodness. Why am I shocking my show? I'm not shocking myself. I'm just scaring myself. <laughs>